morning, you beautiful and awesome people. It's such a privilege to be on this online platform and I trust that you are ready for the word that will come this morning. So get your blankets, get your coffee and get your heart ready for the word to come. I want you to open your Bible in the book of James and we're going to turn to chapter 3. So the book of James has challenged me over the last couple of weeks in such an immense way. And James's pastor is writing to a community and believers that are under immense pressure. He wants them to mature in their faith. Now James reminds them about the word of truth. What is that? The Logos. That is every word that comes from the mouth of God. It's a word about Christ. So what does God say about His Son? He says that you are in Christ. That you've got forgiveness of sins. That you can live with purpose. That you've got fullness with a spirit living inside of you. And you can rule with power. And then also, you are made free. You've got freedom. So you don't have to fear death. You don't have to fear imperfection. God sees you as perfect. And that means you can rest in the finished work of Christ. But James also helps us by activating our faith. And how does that happen? Through the mercy of God. What is the mercy of God? It's the love, His kindness, His compassion, His heart towards us. Not getting what we do deserve. See, the mercies of God activates our seeing, our speaking, and our serving. And you'll see those three come across all the pages of the book of James. Last week, we focused on serving. And this week, we'll be zooming in on speaking. The purpose of speaking. So I want to read from chapter 3 and verse 1. Not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. We all stumble in many ways. Anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect, able to keep their whole body in check. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder, wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil amongst the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire and itself set on fire by hell. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father and with it we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth comes praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. Who is wise in understanding amongst you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambitions in your heart, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. So Father, as we come this morning, we lay our hearts bare before you. And Lord, I pray that you will unlock doors of our hearts. Lord, that you will send your Holy Spirit to identify and highlight all the things 
that needs to be shown today. So as I was praying this morning, I got the picture of a heart that was submerged under water. And what happened is all the muck and all the sludge had to drift to the top. So I pray that this is what the word will do this morning. That it will identify and highlight those things that need to be seen. So Lord, in the words of the psalmist, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable unto you, Lord. Amen. So we see that the chapter 3 of the book of James is so specific. It speaks of the tongue, words, and speaking. And that's why the title of my preach this morning is The Purpose of Speaking. Now we all know that words carry power. What it says is so important. Words are weighty. Some words are light and some words are heavier. So what do I mean by that? Here's an example. You'll hear seven compliments, but it's that one criticism, that one negative remark that outweighs all of them. It sticks like glue. We all know the children's rhyme. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. That is not true. It hurts. How do you treat or react to accusations? I mean, I know what it feels like. It feels like words are queuing up behind your teeth. And it's like a rugby team that are set up in a tunnel, ready to run out for a super rugby game. That is what it feels like. You want to unleash those words. We sit weekly with people that are broken. And these are the things that we hear. A husband saying to his wife, well, it's not the same anymore. I just don't love you. A mother that says to her child, you were a big mistake. A teacher that says to a student, you are stupid or useless. I don't think we realize how much power our words carry. That's why Proverbs 18 verse 21 says, The tongue has power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. You see, James uses examples in this scripture that are powerful. He says, The bit in the mouths of horses are small. It's small, but it controls the whole animal. The same with a ship. It's got a small rudder, but that captain can steer and control that ship in the biggest of storms. James says in verse 5, that is what the tongue is like. It's a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Listen to what the message translation says. It says, a word out of the mouth may seem of no account, but it can accomplish nearly anything or destroy it. So that's why speaking sets the direction for life. I'm going to say that again. Speaking sets the direction for life. You see, it's quite important what I say. Because I might influence or ruin people's lives. I might be standing here today and preach the word. And I might preach heresy. I know for a fact, there'll be an announcement next week that says, Harris was here last week, but... He's not preaching anymore. He's left the building. What we say is so important. Speaking sets the direction for my life. It can influence or it can ruin lives. But speaking also influences and sets the direction for others' lives. James says in verse 1, Not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. Now you might be sitting and saying, Phew, that's, luckily that's not me. I'm not, I'm not a teacher. I've got a surprise for you. Some of us are teachers. Some of us are parents. Some of us are colleagues. Some of us are mentors. Some of us are friends. We have all have persuaded. We've all instructed. We've all challenged. We've all taught. All to shape the views and values of others. See, James is talking and speaking to a bigger, bigger audience than you think. He's speaking to you and me. But it's great to have a set direction in life. Where's the destination? 
James helps us with that in verse 2. He says, Anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect, able to keep their whole body in check. That's the destination, to become perfect. Now that word perfect means teleos, which means complete or mature. Now does that mean I don't sin anymore? No, not at all. You didn't receive a new mouth when you gave your salvation or gave your life to the Lord. But He wants you to mature in your faith. You see, we all fall short of the glory of God. We all sin on this side of heaven. But it's because of God's mercy. It's because of God's mercy what He speaks over me, His promises. What He speaks about me and what He speaks to me. You're mine. I love you. See, the purpose of speaking sets the direction for life. James goes on in verse 9 to 12, and there's a, there's a couple of words that I want to highlight to you this morning. It says praise and cursing coming out of the same mouth. Fresh water and salt water coming from the same spring. A fig tree bearing olives. I mean, that is impossible. But here's the thing that James wants to highlight. He wants to highlight the source. Now, if you look at a spring, it can only give fresh water or salt water, but not both. A fig tree can only bear figs. But this is what James is pointing out to us. He says that blessing and curse can't come from the same mouth. He says it should not be so. But here's the thing. Where does all the speaking come from? It comes from the heart the source. That's why speaking shows the condition of your heart. Matthew 12 verse 34 says, for the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. Proverbs 4 verse 23 says, keep vigilant watch over your heart. That's where life starts. James goes on in verse 7 and he says, all animals, wild beasts, reptiles and birds have been tamed by the human being. But one thing, no human being can tame the tongue. Listen to this. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. That's why James is saying the tongue is like a fire. It uses an example of a small spark that creates this big forest fire. It is deadly. It is devastating. I don't know if you can remember, but in 2019, there was these big bushfires in Australia. And about 186,000 square kilometers was burned down. Now, in South African terms, that means it is the size of Eastern Cape and Gauteng burning down. Here's the thing. It all started with a small spark. You see, that's why James says it's so dangerous. If our hearts are ruled by evil desires, we will speak death. But... In verse 14, he says also the envy and the selfish ambitions, the boasting, those are all the prideful things that come from the heart. That's why Matthew 12 says, your mouth speaks what the heart is full of. See, those things are earthly and soulish and can even be demonic. But here's the other side of the coin. If we know God's mercy, we will be like that ship steered into the wind, where the sails can catch the wind and we can glide on the waves. That's what happened if God's mercy hits your heart, the way that you speak. You see, the way we speak will show the condition of your heart. What does your heart look like? What does your speaking sound like? James ends off chapter 3 in verse 18 and it says, Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. I want to make a small connection today. In Matthew 5, 9, it says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. This is what James wants to show us. If you sow in peace, if you speak in peace, it will sound like this, what verse 17 is saying. You will speak, and your speaking will be pure, peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sincere. 
You see, speaking shows your identity. You can just listen. You will know who the Father is in His love. You will know whose you are. But here's the thing, you will also know who you are. You are made righteous. You called His child. You see, we said earlier that words are weighty. And who says those words is quite important. We look for identity everywhere, but we can't find it. But this is what I want to tell you this morning. Jesus says this about us. He is the highest authority and He speaks over us. He gives us our identity. He says, if you sow in peace, if you speak with peace, you will be called a son of the living God. You see, if the mercy of God hits our hearts, we will realize that we don't deserve to be called sons and daughters of God. We deserve punishment. We deserve to be slaves of sin. We deserve death. But this is what God says about us. Listen to the scripture. Zephaniah 3 verse 17 says, He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by His love. He will exalt over you with loud singing. That's what God says about you today. He sings that over you. You see, the purpose of my speaking is to bring a difference, make a difference in this world. His Spirit is living inside of me and that means I can be an atmosphere changer through what I say and what I speak. I trust that God is busy working in your hearts at this moment. What does your speaking look like? Because there's a purpose to it. I want to pray for us. Dear Father, as we sit here this morning, Lord, as we've heard your word, Lord, I pray that you will touch our hearts. Lord, that those things, that muck and that sludge, Lord, will drift to the top. Holy Spirit, I pray that you'll put your finger on it. And Lord, that you'll bring healing. I want to pray for those hearts that are broken. Those who have spoken devastation. Those who have spoken lashing out at other people because of the hurt that's inside of them. Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit will bring healing in those places right now. And then I want to pray for those who have never turned their hearts towards God. I mean, you can even hear it through their speaking. I just want to pray this simple prayer and I want you to pray after me. Father God, thank you for sending your son, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that you've died for my sins, that you are my Lord and my Savior, and that I can give my heart and turn my heart towards you again today. Lord, shape it. Lord, change my speaking so that I can be an atmosphere changer wherever I go. Amen. So guys, if you prayed that prayer today, I know for a fact that heaven is rejoicing. So I trust that you guys will take this word to heart and that you will speak with purpose. Bless you guys.